Hello and welcome to the Pop Off PC Mag Show. Where we talk about video games, the industry, trends, games, our opinions, all sorts of stuff surrounding the world of you play a thing on your TV, you see it, you press a button, something happens. Wonderful medium. Jordan Miner, mm-hmm. joined by joined by Matt Buzzy. You have to press a button. I love to press buttons. Press so button all the time. All every day. And this holiday, you can press buttons on some buttons you've never pressed before. New on buttons. two brand new this bit two brand new consoles are coming out playstation 5 xbox series s slash x two and a half new consoles two and a half new consoles uh the playstation 5 buttons fight you back that's true that's a great way to put it (laughs) um but you know you buy it you buy a console you don't just buy it to look at it and maybe in the ps5 case you might do that because you're a big irony lord but most people Mm -hmm. buy a console to play games on it yes launch games and today we're going to be talking about launch games for these new consoles uh, and, you know, comparing maybe some past console launches, how they stack up. Because, you know, the thing about launch games is that usually they're bad. Yes. The topic of launch games is a never-ending sort of, I don't call it a debate, but some people debate which console has better launch games. Which is, at the end of the day, launch titles for most consoles through history have been pretty bad. Uh, either there's only one, if you're lucky, two things that are that worth playing, and otherwise it's it's people getting early stuff out for these consoles just to have something, or this kind of real C plus B minus level games, and there's just not that much to look forward to, which obviously doesn't go that hand in hand with having a reason to buy this new console on day one, but everyone also wants the new console on day one. Right, they're rushed, they're, they're games that are rushed, to launch on a piece of hardware that developers have like little experience with. Yeah, and little time to uh, little time to work on these games. Period. And they know people will buy them because people are desperate to play a new thing on their new box. Yep, yep. But this generation in particular, I think, is is kind of the culmination of a like, trend we've been seeing for a while now. Just just cross gen is because they're just so much like PCs now. So many games just are coming out on both at the same time. They don't want to lose that big installed base. But if they launch on the new consoles, they can get some of those benefits, you know, visually, performance, and stuff like that. So, the, yeah, even the definition of a launch game has become uh, very, very fuzzy. Yeah, it's usually a weird period. There's, there's some that launch, uh, sports games in particular. Uh, I, just, I just reviewed FIFA 21, and um, that's an example where you buy this game on PS4 and Xbox One, and it will also come out on PS5 and Xbox Series X, at least this time. I don't think this has been done previously. Uh, they are giving you a free version of, let's say, the PS5 game if you bought PS4. So that's cool. They're mostly the same game. There's some load time and visual enhancements. Um, but yeah, that's sort of, a, they're, they're built on the same engine. So it's not a new version of the game, really. Um, so that's just sort of one of the weird knock-on effects of this, like, straddling the generation time period. And games are not really at their best during this period. You also get the weird effect where, I mean, things like Cyberpunk are coming out and that's like the pinnacle of what the old hardware would have been able to do, but they also want to launch it on these new consoles. It's like, we finally achieved this like ideal open world, good looking game uh, on the old hardware. And now it's time to like kill it and move on. But And uh, in, Cy- in Cyberpunk's case, I think they're going to launch a later patch to like get more out of the new console versions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like one of those things is it can't be built up from the ground up for for the new consoles because it's been in development for so long yet it would really benefit from them but uh it's one of it's like one of those like last hurrahs on on the old hardware which we've seen before in past generations yeah and then you know, microsoft has their smart delivery stuff they're kind of branding kind of their 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 cross-gen initiatives and you know you see it on sony as well you know some of your saves will carry over when you play a new version on a new console um but yeah, let's just kind of get into it. You've got you've got a big thick list. You told me before we started filming of the, the games to play. That list, yeah, of the of the launch titles for each console. So hit us, hit us. If I let's say let's say I'm about to get an Xbox Series S in the mail soon, what exclusive games can I play on it? Is it more than zero? It's <laughs> let me say exclusive, exclusive for the the Series S. I'm gonna say zero. I'm going to say zero. Uh, that includes a bunch of games that are also on the Game Pass, which means the problem with this is, the problem with the Xbox is, if you have a gaming PC, there is very little reason to buy the Xbox. Um, a lot of the games, which is good, are cross-platform day one between the PC and the Xbox. So that's a thing that should have been the case for a, a while. Um, it's, it's cool and it's beneficial to, to consumers. 
uh, but it does make the Xbox itself less necessary, I guess. Now, I saw a commercial recently where a man is at, at a Taco Bell. It's a Taco Bell because the Burger King's one giving away PS5. So he's at a Taco Bell, and suddenly his arm gets covered in some sort of green Space Marine armor. I think it was talking about a new Halo game. Is that something I can play on my Xbox this holiday? Matt oh, Buzzy, famous a, Halo aficionado? It, it was supposed to be. Um, this game was supposed to be out for the launch. It was supposed to be the big Xbox launch title, and it was after a pretty unimpressive showing on its debut. Uh, it was delayed indefinitely. Um, since then, the director has also left the studio or, or stepped away from leading the, the, the game. Um, so it is, let's say, a little troubled. Um, we hadn't seen any of the gameplay up until this reveal, only a few months before it was supposed to come out, which wasn't a good sign. Um, and now it is delayed into next year, but with no specific date. Whether it's a full year from when it was supposed to come out um, in November or not, it will now come out sometime in 2021. But You're shaking. You're shaking with excitement and <laughs> anger like, over this Halo delay. I keep bumping my laptop here. Um, yeah, so that's the big game that has kind of been pulled out from under this console launch. Microsoft is marching on like it's not a problem or it's not really happening. Um, part of that is alleviated by the Game Pass offerings. And it's like, hey, you can, you can buy this box and play all these games if you didn't have um, uh, the most powerful recent Xbox from the last generation, then it'll look better than ever before. Um, and there are some new titles that are not exclusive to Xbox but are still new that will also get enhancements, even like FIFA and, um, and other things that are coming out uh, for both consoles. Yeah, their backwards compatibility stuff is very good. Uh, no Man's Sky, another game you're into, they recently announced their kind of next-gen uh, improvements <laughs> that you'll get for free. Um, also, just a shout-out, uh, Gears Tactics is coming to console. I think also the Xbox One, but the Series S and X, uh, alongside the launch. Uh, it's kind of XCOM-ish, Gears of War game. Uh, that game's really good. I played. Uh, we have a review of it, and I played some of it myself. Um, the way they incorporate some of the like chainsaw gun and hide behind you know, the, the cover shooting. The way they incorporate that stuff into a strategy game I think is really clever. Um, and also, obviously, Gears 5. I think Gears 5 is getting some sort of story expansion, so that might be a reason to check it out on new yeah. consoles. Uh, that um, yeah, pretty good. Otherwise, you're playing these games for improved performance. Maybe you want to play at 4K or a higher, a higher frame rate, whatever it is. Uh, the new console will at least allow you to do that. So that's things like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. Um, not off the bat, Call of Duty. I don't believe Yakuza, it. Yakuza 7, I think. Yeah, Call, Call of Duty's only launch game on, um, on PlayStation 5, I believe. Um, I, don't know that it's, I don't know that it's available day one for the Xbox. Maybe, maybe it just comes out. I think it just comes out after. It's not on this list because I think it releases after the Xbox launches. Okay. Um, but once it comes out, only a few days later, it, it will be available. Um, yeah. So you can buy a, a new console to play games that you can play on your old console already <laughs> is, is my main pitch here. You have Destiny uh, 2 Beyond Light. You have Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition, uh, Call of Duty once it comes out. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to be one of the new big releases. Cyberpunk, which was just delayed, uh, will come out as well on this console. Um, so there are things to play. None of them, none of them you need the Xbox Series X for but it might look better. And if you don't even have, maybe you just never got the Xbox and now you want one. And a lot of people didn't get the Xbox. So. Yeah, so uh, it'll look better. You can do 4K, a lot of people have 4K TVs now and, and didn't before last generation. So uh, these are all factors. Um, there are things to play. None of, just, none of them are necessarily amazing launch titles that themselves will make you run out and get the game. Now, what if I wanted to get a PS5 and totally ruin my interior design? How many exclusive games can I play on that? Is it like two? It's like two. Okay. <laughs> it's, like little, it's like a little better. Um, yeah, one of the one of the um, one of the main draws is going to be the new uh, Spider-Man game. Um, that's Miles, that's yes, Miles Morales Spider-Man. Um, yeah. Not quite a sequel, but a sort of side story uh, expansion-ish kind of you know, addition to the 2018 Spider-Man game on PS4. Obviously, you're playing as Miles Morales. Uh, it's quite different from other Spider-Man in quite a few ways. Um, I really want to play this. I this is the, like I don't think I'm going to PS5, and this is kind of the one thing that's killing me about, about not getting it, is I do really want to play this. Um, I also don't have a PS4, and it's coming out on that system as well. Um, but that game looks great. Yeah, and, and there's a remastered version of the, of the PS4 uh, Spider-Man as well, that's available. So that's kind of cool. Um, that game's good. Like the Spider-Man yeah. game, Miles Morales looks good. Other than that, uh, the big draw for PlayStation, you, you correctly guessed there's roughly two exclusive games, is uh, Demon's Souls. 
Um, yes. It's a, it's a remaster. Obviously, people love FromSoft games. That'll be a big one. Uh, that and Spider-Man. I mean, it's not nothing. It's more than you can say for uh, the Xbox, uh, in addition to all these cross-platform games. Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty. Um, the pack-in game, Astro's Playroom, is apparently pretty neat for a pack-in game for the PS5. It seems like a good demonstration of the various, um, you set the buttons, fight back. Um, and that's, uh, yeah. that seems like a good demonstration of the various kind of different weird haptics and whatnot mm -hmm. in the dual sense. Yeah, uh, you know, HD Rumble. Uh, otherwise, for both consoles, it's you know we're talking about we're talking about Borderlands Three. We're talking about Bug Snacks. Assassin's Creed. We're talking about Bug Snacks. What I was gonna is what I was gonna say. Uh, and then the sports games, pretty much NBA Two K Twenty One, FIFA, all this stuff. Um, whether you are buying it for the first time or getting the free upgrade from the last generation, which is which is cool. Um, that's something to play. Uh, but otherwise, it's all multi-platform. That's not inherently bad just because something's coming out on both consoles and you only want to buy one. If you get to play it still, you get to play it. But uh, in this case, it's more that they're also coming out on the consoles you probably already own rather than that they're coming out on each other. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about, yeah, I'm sure the people who love Souls games, I'm sure will love. Demon. That's kind of the one that kicked us, kicked us off and plunged us into this, this era of maniacs who like bad <laughs> games. Um, but, you know, you buy a console, not for the launch games, you buy it for the promise of future better games. You know, we got Halo coming out eventually, God of War, Horizon, you know, all, all these first party games and big third party games will come out on next gen consoles only, hopefully. So, you know, you, you, when you think about, you think back on a console, you're thinking about its entire library, not, not the, you know, the one or two games that came out at launch. Yeah, it's, uh, it's easy to get caught up in the launch titles because you're looking for what, the, the immediate assumption is why would I buy this console day one? And if you're, if that's immediately answered by it doesn't have any good exclusive games, so there's no reason to, it's easy to get caught up in that conversation. But longer view, obviously, these consoles stick around for a long time and you will have plenty of things to play on it eventually. So if you're excited enough, this is really for the enthusiasts who would run out and get it day one to begin with. Um, it'll be a little exciting just to have the new box in your house and to play uh, the new Assassin's Creed, let's say, on that instead of on your, on your PS4. So kind of for this last little segment here, um, I wanted to look back on some past console launch lineups and maybe see how these compare. Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion that launch titles are usually not very good. Or usually just like, it's just the one or two exclusives and like, that's it. Yeah. Like N64, it's like Pilot Wings and Mario and that's it, you know? It's, it's, um, it's, hard, it's hard to have games ready for this new console exclusively that you've been... So, uh, so give me give me a console, an old console, and I'll I'll tell you a game that launched alongside it. I'll Let's start with the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 that launched with give me a second here. Cameo Elements of Power. Cameo Elements of Power. <laughs> Perfect Dark Zero. Um, HD. It was kind of one of the first HD consoles. So HD versions of uh, you know, Gun. You mm -hmm. ever Gun the game? I remember Gun. Um, Call of Duty 2, I think was that year's Call of Duty game. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official movie of the game. Yeah, I think this is painting a nice picture, really a nice microcosm of what launch lineups are usually like, what the quality level usually is in that, in that C, B. But also game. Geometry Wars, fantastic game. Geometry Wars, and PS4 it was Rezogun. Was the, Rezogun! The arcade pack-in that actually made you turn your new console on because it was something to play. Killzone Shadowfall. Yep, yep. Uh, what else? You want to go a little older here? Yeah, give me the GameCube. The GameCube? That launched with Luigi's Mansion, Super Monkey Ball, and Wave Race Blue Storm. Remember Wave Race? Remember when Nintendo made this these weird, like, extreme sports games with regular people in them? I've seen worse launch lineups than that, I'll say. Uh, Monkey, Monkey Ball's a good time. Oh, and that's just in Japan. In the U.S., you also had uh, Rogue Squadron 2. That's a great game. That's one of the better launch lineups I've heard, honestly. Yeah. And then, you know, Smash Brothers came out, like, soon after. It was in the launch. You know, we get into, like, launch window, then yeah. that kind of expands what you're looking at. What's the, what's the, what was the PlayStation 1 launch lineup looking like? Let's see here. PlayStation 1 in America launched with Rayman, the first Rayman, a, a port of NBA Jam. Great game. In Europe, it launched with Wipeout and Ridge Racer. Those are both kind of enduring and very like Sony associated racing games. Mm -hmm. um, something called Kiliak, the DNA Imperative. Sure. Sure. I, I actually, I mean, a small sample there, I guess, but I feel like old, old lineups actually were a bit better. I think 
uh, this conversation about what what exclusives or what games does it have at launch uh, has gotten a little. There's a little more reason to be annoyed at the new consoles than there used to be. They're they're part part of it is like the weird gray area we've gotten into in this generation between the like pro versions of the consoles and what's in 4k where we kind of already had this like technical upgrade mm -hmm. um, that existed even within the same generation and now we're getting it again across generations so like it's much easier to be like well we'll just do fifa on both and upgrade it we'll just do assassin's creed on both and, and make the, the graphics prettier yeah. um, it's a bit it's a bit less delineated than like clean slate this is the this is the ps2 like clean slate this is the and xbox the playstation that's the cleanest slate you can think of it's yeah. the first console from sony you know the discs it's an entirely so, new thing right, kind of right. breaking it's it's of a gemini. yeah yeah the, yeah. the leap from even the leap from even the xbox to the xbox 360 was bigger than any since the hd consoles as you said like 360 to xbox one is only going to be so much one to the Series X is only going to be something. I'm sure there are technical arguments as to why that's not true, but yeah. in my mind, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like the things like the SSD, those are some of the biggest like features of the next gen, these faster load times and things like that. But um, because of the like bleeding of the, of the technical aspects and how that, uh, that is, there's, there's less of a big visual fidelity jump currently than there used to be. Um, uh, that kind of makes it just a gray area and it makes it easier to kind of interchange the consoles and their launch titles and their multi-platform capabilities and uh, just more hom more homogenous consoles than they used to be essentially. Yeah. But you know, sometimes you can still break away from that. And sometimes it's just launching with that one great game can like put you on a different kind of path to success. Like we saw, I think with the switch launching with breath of the wild, like one of the greatest video games ever, I would say. Um, yeah. Well, all you need to do is have a game that good to, yeah. And a console that failed that bad that you spent all of it working on this one game that's just now ready to go to launch with your new one. Yeah. Uh, the con well, that See, that's a good example because the console itself is a selling point because it's so different than the yes. other hardware yeah. that um, if you just have the one game to get people through the door, then you're good. Um, with it, in this case, it's like these consoles are not that different. They don't offer a different functionality than the current gen consoles, a core, a core functionality like the Switch does with being able to go anywhere. Um, it's, it's less of a clear argument unless you have a stable of amazing games. Um, and those will probably come eventually, but they'll probably be spread across the next couple of years as developers uh, are willing to leave this install base behind and shift to these new consoles, which will offer us very exciting improvements, uh, loading and processing and uh, seamless open worlds because of all these advantages and stuff like that. So it's not to say they won't add any value. It's just to say that they're not as unique from one another or from their previous generation counterparts as they used to be. Yep. So if, if you get a new console this year and you're like, I'm not, there's nothing to play on it, you know, don't sweat it. There'll be stuff to play on eventually. Or maybe just wait to buy the console. Who knows? It's it'll, your be, money. it'll still be around. You'll, you'll get one in the future. Um, the PS5 will still look the way it does next year. Yep. So, you know, that's just some good, again, some good purchasing advice. Some good advice for buying anything mm -hmm. in technology is just do research and sometimes wait when it makes more sense. Yep. Uh, so, Buzzy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And we'll talk to you next time.